Hello and welcome to yet another Flux tutorial. In this video, I'll be showing you how easy Flux makes it to manufacture your board. We'll talk about design rules for different manufacturer and how Flux makes it very easy for you to get started using manufacturer templates. We'll also look at how Flux exports BOM files, which are already in your preferred manufacturer format so that you don't have to go in and start creating and editing rows and columns manually. Finally, we look at some of the options you have when uploading your files to your manufacturer. And in this video, we'll take a look at JLC PCB, Seed Studio, Isla, and Oshpark manufacturing services. Having said that, let's get started. Before exporting your manufacturing files, it is important to make sure your design is aligned with the manufacturer capabilities. In traditional ECAD tools, you had to go over the manufacturer website and transfer each of the design constraint into the tool. However, in Flux, you simply have to start your design using a pre-built manufacturer template. These templates contain all the design rules and constraints and whenever there's a violation, DRC flags it, making it way easier and faster to change things up. To get started with these manufacturer templates, you simply go to create new project and search for your preferred manufacturer. For example, you can search for JLC PCB or Seed Studio templates and just click use and you are ready to start designing. Let's now look at the process of sending your manufacturing files to your manufacturer. And to kick us off, we'll take a look at JLC PCB. When starting out your design and you already know you are going to use JLC PCB to manufacture your boards, Flux provides you with pre-built starter templates that includes all JLC PCB manufacturing capabilities in the design rule so that you don't have to manually do that. JLC PCB offers both manufacturing and assembly services. And in this video, we'll assume you need both and show you the steps to take. Let's assume you are done with the layout. The layout is complete and you're ready to send your files for manufacturing and assembly. You basically need to export three files from Flux a GABA file, a bill of material, and a pick and place file. If you want an in-depth explanation of what these files are, check the link in the description box below. To export these files from Flux, you need to be in the PCB editor, click the Flux logo, export, and start with the GABAs. Select the location you want to save them and click save to start the download process. I'll do the same for the bill of material and pick and place files. The bill of material is a list of all the parts used in your project. Each manufacturer has their own specific requirements for how they want the bill of material to be formatted. Flux automatically exports your bill of material in the correct format for popular manufacturers, including JLC PCB. So if you open this zipped file, you'll see a bunch of BOM files here. I want to just extract the one for JLC PCB and that should be fine. I'm also going to extract the pick and place file because for JLC PCB, I can't upload the zip file. Now that our files are ready, let's head over to JLC PCB website. First thing you want to do is create an account if you don't already have one. Then you click this add gabbers file button. Select the zip file and click open. The files will be uploaded and it will see your board appear here. JLC PCB will detect the size and number of layers and set all these properties for the board. Most of these don't need to change. In this project, I have a USB and the data lines are impedance controlled. So I'll change this to a yes and select the stack up which I used and click confirm. I'm going to leave the default parameters, but this totally depends on what your board is. I also want assembly services, so I'll toggle this button. This board has components on the top layer only. If I had components on both sides, I'll have to change to standard type, but know that this will attract extra costs. So I'll choose the number of boards to be assembled and leave the rest of the options in their default states. I'll click next, then click next again. This is where we upload our BOM file and pick and place file. Click add BOM file and find the file we extracted. Click open to open the file. The same with the pick and place file. Find the file and click open. After that, just click the process BOM and CPL file button. 
the tool will take a few moments to process the files and you'll get a table showing all the parts and their status. You can change some of this by selecting a different part, but just make sure they have the same properties. I'll leave this like this, which means they will be unpopulated. If I click next, it will ask me to either leave them unpopulated or choose alternative parts. For the sake of this example, I'll just leave them unpopulated, but you can do the same thing I've done by selecting alternative parts with the same electrical characteristics. Here, you have to confirm the part placement. Go over each and every part and make sure they have the correct angle of rotation and position correctly. For example, I can select this part and rotate it once to the right. And I can do the same for this one. After that's done, click Next. Here you'll get the total pricing and estimated build time. You can choose a product description here according to your project and then click Save to Cart. Here you'll just make sure the board you added is the one selected then click Secure Checkout and you'll be taken to this page where you're supposed to add your shipping and billing information after which you will be asked to make the final payment. Once payment is done, you'll be able to track the progress of your board up until it gets to you. And that's it when it comes to manufacturing with JLC PCB. It has a lot of steps compared to most, but that is because a lot of these steps are automated. Let's now look at how you do the same thing with Seed Studio PCB manufacturing and assembly services. When starting out your design and you already know you're going to use Seed Studio to manufacture your boards, Flux provides you with pre-built starter templates that include all of Seed's manufacturing capabilities in the design rule so that you don't have to manually do that. Seed Studio offers both manufacturing and assembly services. And in this video, I'll show you the steps to take to get your boards manufactured and assembled by them. Assuming your layout is complete and you're ready to send your files to the manufacturer, you basically need to export three files from Flux. A GABA file, a bill of material, and a pick and place file. If you want an in-depth explanation of what these files are, check the link in the description box below. To export these files from Flux, First, make sure you are in the PCB Editor tab, click the Flux logo, go to Export, and choose Gabas. Flux will start creating the zip file in the background and when ready, you'll have to choose the folder location and click Save to begin the download. I'll do the same thing for the Bill of Material and Pick and Place files. The Bill of Material is a list of all the parts used in your project. Each manufacturer has their own specific requirements for how they want their bill of material to be formatted. Flux automatically formats your BOM file in the correct format for popular manufacturers, including Seed Studio. So if you open this zipped file, you will see a bunch of BOM files here. I want to just extract the one for Seed Studio and that should be fine. Now that our files are ready, let's head over to Seed Studio's website and you can get the link in the description box below. First thing you'll want to do is create an account if you don't already have one. I'm already logged in, so once you are as well, this is where you start. You can either drag and drop your GABA files here or click this Add GABA Files button, which will open the file manager and you can navigate to where you had stored the files. This platform will set most of these parameters and I'm going to stick to most of the default ones. It detects the size of the board and number of layers. For this example, I can decide to change the quantity of boards I want from the default 10 to something like 5. I can also change the color of my board from here, but I'll just leave the default green color. One final thing I want to change is this option. I have impedance control, so I'll change this from no to yes. Since we also want assembly services, I'll start by toggling this button. In this section, we'll need to provide the assembly instructions which include the pick and place files. And this should be in a zipped file format. So I'll click the upload assembly instructions button and navigate to where I have the pick and place zip file and click open to upload it. We also need to provide a bill of material, but before that I'll change the number here from the default one to five 
since we only want five assembled PCBs. I'll click add bomb file and find the seed studio bomb file that we extracted before and then just click open to upload it. Seed will take a moment and then pass all the parts and in a table format, let you know all the parts which are found and the ones which will need to be checked for manually. If you will want to do soldering for the components by hand, you could order a stencil instead by clicking this link and following the instructions there, but I won't go into that. Once you're comfortable with components you want included in your order, we're now ready to add the order to our cart. But before that, there's this section here where you can upload a test plan and Seed Studio will do it for free. For now, I'll just choose Add Test Plan Leader and click Add to Cut. You can view the order by clicking on this cut icon. Here, you can see the details of your order like pricing, quantity, and the status. Currently, the status is confirming. Usually, this takes a couple of minutes or hours and you'd be asked to pay and then you can track the status of your order. And that's it when it comes to Seed Studios PCBA services. Let's now look at how you do this with Isla. If you want to manufacture your boards with Isla, start your project using one of Isla's manufacturer templates. These templates come baked in with all the design rules which take the burden off your shoulders for having to manually put them in the tool. After the layout is complete and you are now ready to send your files for manufacturing, you basically need to export the GABA files. For this example, we're going to assume you only need manufacturing services, which means you don't need the bill of materials or the pick and place files as of now. You do this by first making sure you are in the PCB editor tab. Click the Flux logo, go to export and choose Gabbers. Flux will start creating the zip file in the background and when ready, you'll have to choose a folder location and click save to begin the download. You then head over to Isla's website Scroll down and you can actually drag and drop the garbage here or click the select file button and navigate to where you had initially stored the GABA files. Once you do that, Isla will begin to pass the files. This includes detecting the number of layers, the size of the board and other manufacturing properties specified in the GABA files. You can see some of these properties under the sandbox tab here. I'll go ahead and click check out now. Here I can choose the type of service I want. For this example, I'll choose the first one, beautiful boards. But if you also wanted assembly services, you could go ahead and choose something else. The tool automatically selects the board configuration. I can add a stencil, change the quantity and click continue. Here I can add the shipping address, billing address and choose the preferred shipping method after which I'd be ready to order and pay. And that's it when it comes to manufacturing with Isla. Let's now take a look at how you do the same thing with Oshpark. If you want to manufacture your boards with Oshpark, start your projects using the Oshpark manufacturer template. These templates come baked in with all their design rules which take the burden off your shoulders. After the layout is complete and you're ready to send your files for manufacturing, you basically need to export the GABA files. Remember, Oshpark only does manufacturing, so you don't need the bill of material or the pick and place files here. You do this by first making sure you are in the PCB editor tab, click the Flux logo, go to export and choose GABA. Flux will start creating the zip file in the background and when ready, you will have to choose a folder location and click save to begin the download. You'll then head over to Oshpark's website. You can actually drag and drop the garbage here or click the browse for files button and navigate to where you had initially stored the GABA files and either click open or double click on the file to upload it. Once you do that, Oshpark will begin to pass the files. This includes detecting the number of layers, size of the board, and other manufacturing properties in the GABA files. You can get some of the notes in the files, check out for any critical information. If none exists, you can enter your email here and then click continue. This page is for you to again verify your design, check for any overlapping copper, any silk screen that doesn't look right to you. If you use the manufacturer template, you should be 
pretty good to go. But just to be safe, spend some time here and make sure everything looks good. Once you're comfortable to proceed with the order, click this button. Here is where you specify number of boards you want. Oshpak likes to go with multiples of three, so either three or six or nine or so on. If your board exceeds 100 square inches and you're worried about cost, you can choose this option. I'll just leave the default one and go to checkout. Here you can add your shipping address and then choose a preferred shipping company before proceeding to complete the order and making payment. And that's pretty much when it comes to Oshpak. Really simple and straightforward. If you want to see a start to finish tutorial on how to design a PCB from scratch in Flux, check this video on the right. If you have any questions, leave them in the comment section below. Also, if you enjoyed this content, make sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.